Hello everyone and welcome back to another week of Xbox Live Indie Games. This time we're taking a look at the games that were released in the week of May the 11th to May the 17th, 2014. We are starting off with Vector Madness Zombies. That's right, zombies are back to Xplig, as if they ever left. They were always still here in our hearts. Has been a little while though since we've played just a straight up zombie game. It's all about waves of zombies coming at you, and I'm pretty sure we've played this game before. Or something extremely similar to it. I don't remember what it was or when it was, but I'm pretty sure we've played almost this exact thing. Alright, we control this character, side scrolling. I control the gun with my analog, the right analog stick, and the zombies come at us as the frame rate just dives. Oh, and I'm okay. I appear to have some kind of time power to slow down time, so these zombies become easier targets. And you can tell the loving care that has been put into rendering these zombies. Look at all the details that you can see in these zombies. Well, I guess it's probably because oh, I, I think I died there. I think it's what happened. It's probably because the scariest thing of any kind of monster is, you know, what your imagination fills in. That's clearly why there's there are barely any details on these zombies, and why really the only th thing reason you could call them zombies, I guess, is because they're green and they're moaning. I mean, I think you might have a good case though to say that. Calling them zombies is false advertising. They're just kind of mannequins or people in sheets, maybe. And now we've completed the wave, and we have a uh, we have overlapping text. They're just two menus that are overlapping each other. The developer didn't actually play this, did they? They uh, I don't think anyone played this. I think they just kind of made it in a day and uploaded it to Xblig. Someone must have approved it. Now we're on wave two because, well, that's all you do in zombie games, right? You just have to have waves and waves of zombies coming after you. So you can shoot them all dead. You don't actually need anything else in a game like this. I see, though, that the developers adhere to the fast zombies style. Of course, that, that controversial debate over whether zombies should be fast or slow, these zombies seem pretty fast. Is that the next wave done? I've unlocked new guns. That's what I... Uh, it looks like it's just the same thing. That's Vector Madness Zombies. You can see all of this madness happening in front of you as we're, we're shooting things that are probably could be considered to be zombies because that's what the game is called. No, that's really the only thing that makes them zombies, I think. Next up this week is Parksa. What is Parksa all about? Made by two people. I press start to play. All right. So, well, there's a deathmatch mode. But we want to play the campaign. We want to play the single player. We have a two pe two people having a conversation about their controls. But let's start the new game. We do have a timeline. Okay. Uh, there's a story. There's lore to Parksa. Yeah. Okay. All right. We could. Uh... Oh, the sky is all red, and now we're upset. As I think, what's happening? Uh, oh, goodness! It's um. Uh... Well, not the house of doors to places! Oh, there... It went into the... Oh, there we are! It went into the temple. We have to get through all these doors, I think, is what's happening. We start off in, in City World. I don't know why we can't just walk past the doors and go up the stairs, but that's where we're starting. Alright, City World. Alright, we have to fight these yellow faces. I don't know what they are, but our character can shoot upwards. And we can get power-ups like that, and that one doesn't help me. I can't walk into the enemies, because they I will die if I do that. Yeah. Again, doesn't really help. I can jump, I can shoot. That's pr 
pretty much all I seem to be able to do. I don't know why the only reason I can shoot is up. But we, we cleared the stage. We did a good job with our character, who I'm going to assume is named Parksa. I don't know what the name of the game means. Let's say it's the name of the main character. Why not? Oh, I think... I'm guessing that's a shield? I don't know why... Again, I don't know why we had to go into City World to make our way to Temple. Seemed like we could just walk past that, go up the stairs of that house, with the doors that lead to all worlds and all places. I guess the place we live is the hub world that connects all realms in the universe. One touch, and we died, and that is a wonderful handwritten you died screen. Alright, let's continue on with our quest to destroy these evil yellow faces. I guess we have to be careful, we don't want to create too many of them at once. Probably want to destroy as many as we can before we split any of the larger ones. This is the tactics you have to think about when playing Parksa. Alright, we finished City World. We're going on to the forest. Alright, we're in the forest. It's all scary and spooky. Something looking at us in the background. I would like that power up, that shield, but it didn't fall down here. I, I died once again. But I think we're getting the, ha the hang of Parksa, figuring out ha wh how, what it is we need to do to save what I assume is our, our girlfriend. From the clutches of yellow faces. Which may, might be some kind of alien or interdimensional being who turned the skies red and, uh, plot, I don't know, maybe plot the end of all, uh, of all things? Maybe that's what they do? I don't know. One of the power-ups came down here. Oh, that looks like dynamo. Oh, okay, I'm not shooting up anymore. I'm shooting landmines? It seems like what that's what that is. Oh. All right, so there can be a variety of weapons that we use in Parksa, depending on the power-ups we get. All right, first level of Forest World is done. How elaborate and complex will these levels become? I guess the only way to find out is to make it to the end of Parksa. Music filled with tension. Second stage is done. Can I climb those ladders? I can! Okay. The game mechanics of Parksa becoming more impressive as we go. We also have ladder climbing to contend with. So, oh. All right, we have a laser, it looks like. Yeah. 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 
There's a, a delay until we could shoot the laser again, though, so that can be an issue. We've almost done it. We've done it. And from there on, we move on to- Oh no! Psycho Forest? That's not where we want to go! Welcome to the Psycho Forest. It's like the normal forest, but insane. This forest is dramatically lacking empathy. Game over. Now, not only game over, but game over in a Photoshop filter. So, apparently Parksa will never rescue his girlfriend and never save the worlds and all dimensions from the evil yellow faces, from whatever it is they want to do. Okay, time expired anyway, so we were not going to complete Psycho Forest regardless. So I guess that's Parksa. <sighs> Will we ever be able to resolve this story and find out what happens? The compelling lore and backstory of Parksa makes me want to keep going in this game, keep exploring, see what the further worlds hold. Make it to the end of the house that contains the doorways to all places and all times and make it to the temple. And find out what these yellow faces wanted in the first place. I'm sure it's all answered in Parksa. Next up this week is Tapper. Tells us to press start, so that's what we do. Yeah, let's play it. What is Tapper? There are controls. Well, we start off as a square, and we can shoot other squares. So, yes. Dual joystick shooter. Been a little while since we've just seen a straight-up overhead dual joystick shooter like this. And they usually, when we did see them, they usually involve zombies or monsters or something like that. Now, this is just, this is just cubes. This is just squares. We have to shoot them. There's no music or anything. Tapper brings it back to basics. You don't need any presentation. You don't need any music playing while you're doing this. You don't need any kind of graphics that show you what these enemies are, or what you are, or any reason for doing any of this. You just need squares on the screen that represent you, represent the enemy, and represent your own shots. And a score, counting upwards in the corner. Just breaking it down. This is minimalist gaming. It's what gaming is really about. All that other stuff you see in video games, just they're just things that sort of get in the way, that tend to, to muddle things up. They get you to think about things other than what really counts in video games. At least I assume that is what the programmers of Tapper, of, uh, of Tapper would say. The developers. I can't seem to kill the blue square. Is that an enemy? Yeah, okay, it's an invincible enemy, is all that is. Okay. That's Tapper, I guess. I played it for a little bit, doesn't seem to change from this. At least what I've seen. It's Tapper. Next up this week on Xbox Live Indie Games, it's Servo Series 1, Overclockers. You can tell by the music that this is a very serious game, with a serious premise. Let's start a new game, see what it's about. All right, we have a loading screen giving us tips as we load. It says that uh, there are guilds in the game. We might want to join them and who we can talk to and where in order to join them. All we can really see so far in this game is it is about robots. You can probably guess that from the title.
more game, more tips, helpful tips as we load. And there has been a bit of loading so far. I'm sure the game will get here any time now. Or maybe the loading is just to... to instill in us a feeling of... anticipation. Of tension. As the music plays, and we see these tantalizing screenshots of Servo Series 1 overclockers, what could be in store for us when the loading finally ends? I mean, I'm seeing these images of this world, and I can't wait to get into this. To go off on some kind of robotic adventure, I assume, is what this is. Oh, hold on. Loading has started. The default name for the robot is Rusty. Um, I think... I think there's only one appropriate name for a robot for this game. Yeah. Or since we're a robot... That seems that seems appropriate. All right, we are a robot. We've we're brand new. We've come off the factory floor. Let's go see Alan Frisbit. Finalize our registration. All right, it's a travel center. It's a large area. Oh, there's an arrow. There's an objective arrow up there. There are other robots we can speak to though. Sometimes I get this on my optical lenses, which makes it difficult to see. I, I can, I can relate with you, robot. Move faster with your weapon, Lord. You know, you never think about the everyday, day-to-day -day problems that robots have to deal with. Until it's just, you know, just brought up right to your face. Loading zero one. Your estimated time of arrival was two days ago. Taradinus will not be tolerated in keyboard springs. Anyway, my records indicate that you have been assigned here as a simple tasking, but I really do not see much use for you. Go see Dr. Andrews. He will scan you for viruses to ensure you cannot harm the others. Alright, I guess we need to go see Dr. Andrews. And I suppose these are not recorded voice clips. This must actually be voice synthesis because they said our name. Called us Loading01. The Kill-9 Gil is a contracting service for bot termination. And here's the doctor we need to speak to. Zero one, Alan sent word that you would be arriving. The factory has been churning out some bad bots lately, so I need to scan you for defects and viruses. The core programming of all bots is to be a productive citizen of society, but that is not always the case. Unfortunately, my scanning device is in need of repair. It needs a new quad corridor. Here are 10 credits. Please purchase the new part from the vendor and bring it back to me. Well, you, you can't buy it yourself, Doctor? The vendor is just right over here. There's a bunch of stuff we can buy at the vendor, but we only have enough for one particular thing and only one thing that we're supposed to be buying. Dr. Andrews gave us the money for the quad quarter, and we need to get this to, to check out. Oh, oh, Doctor? 
Where are you going? He's leaving this platform, and there appears to be a large world outside of the platform that we are very afraid of. We don't know what to think of it. Get the quad corridor. Yep. Performing scan now. Thank you, loading zero one. The scan is complete. Unfortunately, I am unable to see the result because of security reasons. The results have been sent to Charlie McClaw, who is the head of security. He will finalize your registration. Please see Charlie at the other end of town. All right, Charlie McLaw. That sounds like an appropriate name for the security bot. It said we have attribute points to spend, though. Let's see. All right, attributes. Oh, we have three remaining points. Uh, I don't know what we might want to put them into at this point. We really haven't done anything. Maybe we should just keep them until we have a better idea of what's going on. All right, we can see that from the arrow, Charlie McLaw is over this way. It is good to see you loading zero one. I received the scanning results from Dr. Andrews and they are most interesting. You have a defect in your core programming. Normally, defective bots are terminated immediately. However, your defect is unique. Some may call it a gift instead of a defect because it allows you to venture outside of normal protocols in regards to honesty, virtue, and responsibility. I recommend you make good decisions or you will pay the price. Many years ago, I was instructed to advise anyone with this scanning result to the is it oh. Franklin Berman in Monitor Falls and to provide 100 credits for expenses? You are the first to receive this notification. I suspect he might have some tasks suitable for your talents. You may want to get a helmet and some experience before venturing to Monitor Falls. The bots outside of town can be hazardous to your health. All right, Charlie McLaw with a lot to say. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, so we won't be able to go to Monitor Falls. And I am just, honestly, I'm just kind of reeling a little bit from this game. So, am I getting this right? Did someone make a low-budget Elder Scrolls game for x -Plague? Featuring 100% synthesized voice? That's kind of kind of amazing i think that's what this is just judging from how, how it looks and what it seems that the idea of the game is just talking to people and getting quests and going to different places just from what i've seen from the screenshots there is combat as well quest screen. You can change the active quest. Yeah. there's melee and ranged combat it looked like from the screenshots and I I think that's what this is. I think someone made a low-budget Elder Scrolls game for x plague with robots. I kind of want to play more of it. Because I'm kind of intrigued by why someone would do this. That's Servo Series 1 Overclockers. It's, it's, well, it's only Servo Series 1. So I assume an Episode 2 would be coming at some point. This is not the, the only game in the series, apparently. Seems that there would be an episode two at some point, I assume. And that's promising. All right, Croc's World, he's the man. Made by apparently a company that makes games for the mobile world, but we're not on a mobile platform right now. We're on the Xbox 360. Let's play. Croc's World? Okay, it's a side scroller. There's Croc. He's jumping around, getting gems. Squishing enemies, crushing their insides horribly as they die gurgling, wondering what they did to deserve such pain. We got a football helmet, which we can use to smash these blocks. And that sound effect is Nintendo-rific.
I mean, seriously, it, everyone knows what that sound effect is. Why would you use that? Wonderful! We cleared the level and killed all of the animals. Apparently we're in some sort of dark metropolis. An ancient dead city. And I got a power-up, I can throw s stones. Alright, so the way it works it seems is that I can run and jump on enemies. I can get a power-up from a block. The first power-up lets me, uh, gives me the ability to destroy blocks with my head. And then if I have that power-up when I get another one, it allows me to, to shoot projectiles. That seems to be how this goes. If that seem might seem familiar to anyone. I don't know. I don't know. We did it! Oh no, the demo is just two levels, because we, out of 30 levels, they couldn't give it all away in the demo. Just a peek, just a taste. Mm, give me a little bit of that taste of Crocs World. Just, just a little bit to get the juices flowing, to make me want to pay for the full game, and play all the way through it. I mean, so, the game looks fine. And it plays okay, but it, it, I don't think it's a real good idea to make your game bite that much off of Super Mario Brothers, or Super Mario games in general. Because when you do that, well, the Mario platformers are some of the most finely tuned platformers ever made. So when you do that, you're opening up your game to comparison, direct comparison with those games. And you're not going to look good in, in comparison. It's just never going to happen. Croc's world is not as finely tuned. It does not have the good as good controls as a Super Mario game. And the fact that the, the game is quite obviously made in that model is just opening itself up to that kind of comparison, which is just making me think of Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World as I play the game, and it doesn't look good directly compared to that. So I get what they're going for, I just think that maybe they should... Maybe they shouldn't be so Mario. Because that exists. It's a lot better than this. I don't really want to trash Croc's World because, hey, in comparison to other exploit games, this is actually alright. Uh, but when you compare it to Super Mario Brothers, no. No. That's Croc's World. And technically, that's the last game of this week. The week that was, uh, the games that were released in the week of May the 11th to May the 17th, 2014. There was one more game, but we're not going to be playing it. The game was called Flappy Worlds, which, hey, guess what that is? It's a Flappy Bird clone. Been a little while since we've seen one of those. And I was all looking forward to it, but, I mean, if we... If we go to it, hold on, let's just pull that up. Flappy Worlds. If we go to this, turns out there's no demo. I've never seen that. I thought a demo was mandatory. For every game I've seen on Xplig, there has always been a demo. But for Flappy Worlds, somehow there is no demo. You look at screenshots. It's Flappy Bird. That That's still Flappy Bird, even though it looks a little different. That, okay. That looks different. Maybe that's something else. What's the description for this? Help Flappy and all of his friends flap their way through all six unique worlds. Flappy Worlds is the sequel to Flappy Feathers. Profit for this game will be used to help fund Indiemon Thunder Region and Indiemon Villain Version 2. Yeah, the Indiemon. I remember seeing those on Xplig a while back. I guess this is made by the same people. So for whatever reason, there's no demo for this. It's only a dollar, but I was thinking about that. It doesn't seem right to reward them for not having a demo with buying their game. Whereas I didn't buy the games, the other games this week that did have demos. That just seems kind of kind of backwards. So we're not going to be playing Flappy Worlds. 
that's those were all the games that were released that week, last week of May the 11th, May the 15th, 2014 on Xbox Live Indie Games. Game of the week, I would say, is Servo Series 1 Overclockers just because of the... that someone would actually do that. I don't know, maybe I'll play a bit more of that and just see how that goes, because I kind of thought that was kind of interesting. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time, next week, assuming that there are more exploits coming out, and there always seem to be. I'll see you next time for more of these wonderful, wonderful Xbox Live indie games.